All right, lads, welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm Sarko or Jack. Today, we're taking a look at the vehicles of D-Day for Golden Eagles. I own all four of these vehicles and I have owned them for a very long time. So we're just going to quickly go over whether you guys should buy them. So we have the British Achilles, the Stuart 4 light tank came after the Stuart 3, I believe. Not really that many upgrades have this little thing on the tank. We also have the P47M1 Thunderbolt, in many ways the best kind of premium in this for bundle thing and then finally we have the typhoon mark 1b so that's what we're looking at today let's jump into war thunder and take a look at each vehicle a lad so this is our first vehicle it is the canadian stuart 6 5th canadian division to be exact compared to the other stuarts it's got an all welded basically design the stuart 1 has a riveted completely the stuart mark 3 has a welded turret and a riveted hull whereas this has a fully welded design does that matter in War Thunder? Not really. It will give you a slight advantage in terms of protection, but not really that drastic, to be honest. It is a Stuart. It is a light tank. It's made for flanking and spanking. Kind of like a British meta, really. We do have a SAP HE round. This isn't really that useful. Only 32mm of pen. At 2.7, you're not really going to be able to do too much with that. Your APC BC round, the M51 B1, is going to be your go-to weapon. 87mm of pen with a 37mm gun. It's not going to be pumping out a lot of damage. While you do have high penetration, you have basically no post pen damage. You're going to have to aim for weak spots in this tank. You aren't going to be getting one shot kills. Is it a good grinder? Not really. It is in the second rank. So you will be able to grind out rank for your vehicles with it. It does sit at battery in 2.7, which while you do have kind of a mess with the M3 Lee and the M5A1 Stuart, you don't really have a massive um, backup vehicle. I do have the M81 or the M8A1. That's quite a good vehicle to run with this. But it's not really that worth it in my opinion. It's a decent little light tank for fun. But it's not. If you're desperate for grinding out the American tech tree. It's really not for to buy really in my opinion. Next vehicle is the Achilles. This is in the British tech tree. At battery rating 3.3. In the third rank of the British tech tree as you can see here. So you will be able to use it to grind out all the rank 4 vehicles. I guess. So this is basically a British Lend Lease version of the American M10, I believe. It is armed with the 17-pounder. Very, very good gun. Our best round, of course, is the Shot Mark 8 APC-BC. Kind of like the Stuart. Kind of, we have high penetration, but not the best post-pen damage. It's a lot better than the Stuart in terms of getting one-shot kills, because it is a much larger caliber. But it's, it doesn't have any explosive filler, so you aren't going to be able to get those nice one-shot kills that you're probably used to with the Shermans or a Tiger or a Panther. So is this good for grinding? Like the Stuart, it's really not. It's a very niche playstyle, to be honest. A low-tier tank destroyer. While it does have a fully rotating turret, which is kind of unique to tank destroyers this low, it's not a really good vehicle for grinding. If you're trying to grind out the British Tech Tree, then the Cromwell 5 or even something like these little things are better oh. you can get the comet iron duke that's the best case the ac5 is also pretty good and is also in the third rank so not really worth buying in my opinion equally like it does have a good little lineup with the 3.3 british you have the cromwells the premium cromwell the uh, sark so it does have a place in a battle rating if you do choose to get it but it's not really worth buying in my opinion also in the British tech tree, we have the Typhoon Mark 1B. Bearing in mind, this is a rank 3 battery rating 4.3 vehicle, which means this is the exact same battery rating as the Typhoon 1B Late. This thing is better than the premium in every way. Take a quick look here. This has four blades on its propel, which gives it a lot more power output. Does this thing also get high octane fuel? No. But this thing only has a three bladed prop. This is like the earlier version. It's basically not as good as the Typhoon 1B Late. It's just not as got as much power. It is still a pretty good dogfighter. These things historically were kind of for like ground attack. In War Thunder, they are more dogfighty. They're kind of like a blend between a. It's like an evolution of a hurricane, really. It's not really that good at dogfighting, but it can outturn most Germans. And it does have quite a high powerful engine as well whether you should grind it or whether you should buy it actually considering that it's in this bundle thing again can't really recommend it it's kind of outclassed by some of the other 4.3 vehicles now the uh premium 
is the bloody this Thunderbolt. This is probably the best rank three British premium if you want to get one. It carries more bombs. It's just as fast. Probably well, it's definitely not as agile as the Typhoon. This thing has kind of been outclassed over the year over the years. Where you can carry a large amount of RP3s. Nowhere near as good as they used to be. If you remember the Orange Doom making his montage back in the day, they're a long way off from where they used to be like that. You can take bombs as well, but again, not really that powerful. Not really worth the money, in my opinion. And finally, we have the P47M1RE. Not quite sure what the other designation means, but this is basically a completely uptuned P47. It has a much better engine for high altitude. Something that not many people know about this plane, it also has dive brakes. I'm not sure if you can see them, these things here. So you can actually can you can out dive Germans and you can air brake them to get them up, get them to overshoot as well. It's a very, very handy plane. Especially in the fourth rank at a fast rating 5.7, you will see a lot of 6.0 games with big stupid uh, German JU-288s. You will get a high win rate, or at least you should do if you're a competent pilot. You can also carry a large amount of ground ordnance. You can see here HVARs and 1000 pounders, as you'd expect from any good P47. This is kind of like a late war P47, it's just better altitude, really. There's not really too much to say. I would say that this plane is worth it if you can actually afford it. I haven't flown it out in quite a long time, I will be honest with you, but I still see a lot of people playing these. It's never really going to be a bad plane. You can use it in ground realistic all the time. It's got a pretty decent climb rate for a P47 as well. Bearing in mind that doesn't take into account the boost modes. This thing has twin superchargers, I believe, or two things superchargers. It's actually decent at climbing. You will have to side climb, but like I say, it's a P47 that's been basically supercharged out of its balls, which balls out ironically as we see there. I'd say it's worth it. I don't know how much it is because I've I own all of these vehicles already. It's a good plane though. It's fantastic for grinding out the American tech tree. It's plays kind of like an American boom and zoom, but you've got a lot more power, so it's a little bit more forgiving. It is quite advanced for a prop though, so if you're new to play it a war thunder, if you don't really know what you're doing with props, then I wouldn't really recommend it. But you, you it's taking the American play style and like throttling up to 100 really. It's not like a Japanese zero where you can just turn all day and still get pretty decent results. Anyway, boys, I hope you like this quick video. I'm not going to leave it here any longer. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all my YouTube members, and I'll see you in the next video.